Heavenly Father, today we put on the full armor to protect us against attack. We put on the belt of truth to protect against lies and deception. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts from the temptations. We put the gospel of peace on our feet to walk in your light, peace and freedom with the Holy Spirit. We rebuke anxious thoughts. We take up your shield of faith for protection to block and destroy all the darts and threats thrown at us by the enemy. We put on the helmet of salvation to cover our minds and thoughts, reminding us that we are children of a mighty king. We are forgiven, set free, saved by the blood of Jesus. We take up the sword of the spirit, your living word that has the power to demolish strongholds and is sharper than any double-edged sword. We come to you, Lord, in prayer daily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of The Imagination. I'm your host, Emma, and this is going to be a very special episode you'll want to pay attention to from start to finish. Joining me today is former Hollywood movie producer, John Paul Rice, who went from being a renowned Hollywood producer, helping to bring to life prolific blockbusters such as The Hunger Games and Remember the Titans, to being a Hollywood outcast almost overnight when a live video went viral a couple years ago where John authentically and heartfeltly exposed pedophilia and trafficking in the entertainment industry. Ever since, John has continued to speak out and began his own independent film company, No Restrictions Entertainment, where he has taken it upon himself to invert films back to having meaningful messages infused with love. For the context of the topics I cover on this podcast, I'd highly recommend watching his renowned films, A Child's Voice, which shines a light on human trafficking and SRA, as well as his most recent film, Game Day, which is a humorous and inspirational film that details the layers of dysfunctional family dynamics over a game of football, something most, if not all of us, can relate to. A Child's Voice has been streamed millions of times all over the world and was awakening people so fast to the horrors of human trafficking and SRA that even Amazon ripped it from their video library. The viral video of John exposing Hollywood happened as a result of his film being censored online, which led to him exposing the darkness of Hollywood, shocking all who watched the video across the world. Currently, John's speaking engagements have evolved into deep, eloquent, meaningful, and compassionate conversations around child abuse, parenting, and the importance and duty all of us have to our children and the importance of adults healing their own inner child in order to stop the pandemic of generational trauma and abuse being proliferated around the world onto our children by unhealed adults. Ironically, and something I've never talked about on here before, is John's role in my own creation of this podcast. I was changed forever after seeing his viral video with my own two eyes a couple years ago and was so inspired by his bravery that it was one of the key elements as to why I began speaking out myself and wanting to feature survivors and whistleblowers on my show. It gave me a much needed push. And for that, I'll always be eternally grateful to John. As fate would have it, I eventually connected with him on social media last year, and I'm honored to now call him a dear friend. As John's work in film and speaking continue to evolve and grow, and in my own conversations with him, I can say without hesitation that I believe him to be and have one of the most important voices of our time. While others are focused on division and hate, John speaks from the heart with from a refreshing place of love, compassion, and creating real life change. I'm delighted and honored to be joined today by my guest of honor, survivor, film producer, brilliant creator, voice for the voiceless, child abuse activist, man of God, and my dear friend, the one, the only, John Paul Rice. John, Whoa. thank you so much for being here with me today. Oh my God, that's a, that's a beautiful introduction. <laughs> that was a beautiful introduction. Thank You're worthy you. of all of it. It's hard to fit everything you've done into it. <laughs> I just sit here. This is, this is it. All I do. And then I just blop, blop, blop. And things happen. <laughs> now, for yeah. people who might be new to you or your story, or maybe they've yeah. listened to you on, I know you do a lot of podcasts. Maybe they've heard you somewhere mm -hmm. else, but don't know much about you as a person. Mm -hmm. I'd love to start just with a little bit about who you are and for you to mm -hmm. fill in some of the gaps on what I talked about in the intro. Yeah, um, that was a really comprehensive intro, and thank you. Um, my background is I have several lives and one of those lives was a life uh in atlanta and in kentucky louisville specifically and uh and then there was another life in los angeles and 
all of those are connected in many different ways. And it even goes back generations when you start to unpack things, right? So the story started long before I came into the picture. <laughs> but the life that I lived uh, in Los Angeles was 19 years. That's really where the story for me has been mostly focused on in terms of healing from having looked back at all that time and then going back and looking at my my young adult years, teenage years, childhood years, and seeing the mirrors between the two, right? And I went to Hollywood because I had a talent as an actor. I was very authentic. Um, that's one of the qualities they look for. I was also um, traumatized. That's also something they look for. Uh, they know your bloodline better than you do. Uh, the people at the very top that let you in to their door. And they want to take a good look at you because authenticity and idealism is like a premium in that town to, to utilize as a face. And I didn't know any of that. So what I'm telling you is all after the fact. It's, 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 it's having been a young man in his 20s going to a man in his 40s now. And, um, and so I made uh, a break from the industry. I had found myself surrounded by the first five or six years and then went into film to do independent movies and came out on the other side of this industry that I thought I once knew and didn't know. Like many today who would tell you, I'm no, I'm no different than half a dozen other people that have told stories about the industry of what they thought it was versus what it really is. And um, I looked at my role in it, actually. And when I say I looked at my role in it, um, not the role that I intended to play, not my plan A, not, not my plan B even, but um, how child abuse in all its forms, and we can talk a little bit about what that mean, really means, uh, distorts the Christed love that's just bursting from these babies that are God's children. And this is not a religious position whatsoever that I am taking here, in fact, in this time, I would really not uh, believe in authority being your savior outside of, I'm talking about in the world now, I'm talking about outside in the other world, that's the authority I answer to. That's the authority. That's the authority that loved me through all of the hell I lived through as a child. Loved me more than any other human being ever could in my life, in my, in my universe, in my time and space. So, you know, the, what I did over the last, I, I do want to just say, answer your question, because there's a lot to, to, to unpack with each of those things, but they're different times. And really all I had was, I had to pledge to be the most honest, authentic and truthful person that I have ever met in my entire lifetime. It took me years to get here. It's a continual progress and process. As you know, you have been with me on this for over a year and you've seen, and you've watched others too. We all have, everybody during this time, <clears throat> has gone through a disruption and call it an awakening, but it's a disruption from what the illusion of reality and what better way to get people hooked back into reality than to scare the shit out of them with the fear of dying by the billions for something that they can't see. And all of those unconscious traumas coming out and now manifesting into conscious realities that don't exist. 
because they're all collectively and uniquely individually in belief of them because of authority telling them this is true. And you know, the truth is for all the people out there that try to claim that all of this is gonna be wrapped up nice and neatly when all the crimes and truths come out. Let me just tell you, this world wasn't made for you and me to get justice when justice should have been done in the past in the first place. So all that you're seeing today is all the past is being shown in front of you to keep you going on this journey with them to listen, to tune yourself in, to plug in your trauma to their world, the scarcity, the fear, the crash that's coming, all of those things that they do manufacture, but also we manufacture them collectively because we're plugged into them. And the reason we're plugged into them, if you go back to the beginning, is because we over time have been delegating more and more of our authority away. You know, if you go back to 9-11 and you just look at the Patriot Act and what that did to our rights, our constitutional rights, that hasn't been repaired. That hasn't been changed. And everybody said, hey, I got nothing to worry about. I got nothing. All you were doing all along was consenting to the full surveillance and spying on you that's now under underway. And you've got... AI out there listening to everything and going out and people get scared of all this. And I go, yeah, there's, this is a shit ton of stuff to get scared about. There's plenty to be scared about. There's plenty and endless threats, threats that you couldn't believe. There's, there's climate change over here and there's climate change over there to be worried about. And there's pollution and, and there's human trafficking and there's, there's crime and there's violence and there's, hypersexualized, materialist, uh, fake feminist, all sorts of stuff that just goes on and on and on until the galaxy far, far away is hit. And it's, it's an abyss. It's an endless black abyss that goes on forever. And do you want to know something? It's smaller than it's ever been ever before, but it's being amplified by everyone. I'm being a little John, uh, John Rappaport. Um, he, uh, I just want to say this one thing for your audience. They should all watch, go hunt it. I'll give you the link. John Rappaport, 2014 secret space program about mind control. And it's an hour and a half long. There's some clips out there. It's very hard. To, it's not hard, but it, you got to search for it a little bit. Um, that's one of the most inspiring speeches you could watch today. And it's timely for right now. It's the conversation that everybody has to have. What can I do? You're looking at it. You are the only person that can answer that question. No one else can tell you unless you want an authority to follow. And they will be glad for you to come to the authority to ask them, what can we do? And they'll say, I'm glad you asked. By the way, I have a new technology to offer you. Here is your transhumanist agenda. Happy to see you. We were waiting for you guys to get tired of the old things so that we could bring you the new thing. Authority has now been transferred to the people through technology. Ooh, fun time, right? Nothing can go wrong there. Nope. No boundaries. No need to control behaviors just to observe them. Pornography existing in virtual reality is not a problem. We'll crack down on it. Just give up more of your rights. You'll want everything to be safe. We'll let the monsters in and then you'll beg for us to get them out. And then we'll come right in and do the same ritual over and over again until you guys finally wake up and realize that you have to stop listening to these assholes. I, I don't know. I mean, I know that's that's a lot of cuss words uh, in a few paragraphs there, but I like I, I'm going to just put it down on you all. It's like it's like they're begging you to continue giving them time. And they're just going to they're taking you along for a thrill ride that has violent ends in the end. In the end, it, it's to occupy your mind to scare you of past echo recall traumas 
that don't have words, but they have recall, they've got symbols, they've got language, they've got tones, they've got all of this pre-programmed into you through your entire life, like in your subconscious mind. So all like, here's what they're doing. And then I'm going to turn it over to you. That's the last thing I'm going to say, because there's so much we could do. But it's like, if there was a time to understand where we are, it's that everything that had been sown before is now being reaped. The awakening is not just the awakening of you seeing the falsehood from the side of your duality that you're on, which is where they want you, okay? The left is the terror and the horror of the whole thing. But guess what? What people forget suddenly was that four years ago, the fake news media waged a fake tyranny upon the country and the world for those who didn't see because Donald Trump was in this time the truth teller with the ugly face on it but he was the authoritative father figure that the left and feminists would have been taught to hate completely and totally and and understandably understandably his persona so you had to look past your own psychological predisposed like when the activists go out that that's you're just getting that emotional impulsive hit you know oh yes misogynist you better believe it all those men before my father to all the other guys that have wronged me it, believe me believe me yes is it all true certainly it was but what is the net outcome effect it is to make you pissed off and angry about somebody you know nothing about and that face is interchangeable it's interchangeable this is the thing people think it's this one versus this it's interchangeable trump and biden i'm just going into this for one second trump and biden have the same features in news cycles biden is senile old man what did the media say about trump he needed to be impeached because he was a senile, crazy bastard. Uh, we have the real thing, but two sides of that mirror are seeing it completely different, right? Okay, so you can take that and multiply that by a thousand across all the issues you're watching from Elon Musk to this. Everything is coming undone. All the social norms are coming undone. They're being undone because they were wound up to such a point that we hit a tipping point. And the tipping point, though, the real key, and I'm just, this is my, my belief, okay, is how you respond in this time will define the next generation more so than what this time is defining in this time. In other words, you've been shown all of this. You see what the wreckage is. You see what's happening in the streets. You see what's happening in the world. And really all it comes down to is your beliefs. The world you believe is real. And that's the one you have to live. Because if you don't live it, then it isn't real. It isn't real. It's like you trying to tell people it's there. Well, where? Right over here, where? Right in front of you, where? Me, I am, where? Right here, where? That's you in the mirror going, where? Right here, me, it's me, I'm living it. I have to, I can't put my emotional headspace allow that to live rent free in there anymore and it's not that you deny its existence you have to defend yourself you have to but see this is the whole point it's like you get a chance to look at what authority is doing to people you get one more chance to look at it before you get to switch your roux again everybody goes ah supply chain issues solved because of technology yes 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 Inefficiencies going all around the supply chain solved by technology? Yes. Yes. We need to make money. We got it. We had a whole economy out there. Oh, yes. Yes. Get me out of this shithole. 
They're creating the dependency. But the only reason why we stay is because we still believe that their authority ultimately has any say over what we actually do. We are waiting for, we have not woken up to realize that we're still waiting on something to come and change it. And the thing is, is that it's not about presidents. It's not about institutions. It's not about um, world orders. Okay, They're, they all exist, but they exist in their world, in their reality. If you spend time fighting it, it makes it, it has energy more. It appears that it's real to the other people who are for it and they'll defend it. But you don't have to go around terrorizing people <laughs> to tell them that something is real because they're not gonna believe it until they see it. And, and what I'm saying is how many people knew about Epstein before he was arrested, but it wasn't until he was arrested before it was real to everyone. But that's after the fact, again, it's all in the past. And it hasn't solved anything other than the fact that more people know about it, but also the net effect of that is again, look at where we're drifting now to classify everyone as a psychopath who is uh, drag show like we could talk about that i'm not really wanting to get into all that but what i'm saying about that is we're being baited for culture wars and not seeing what's going on around us we are just creating the next battles ahead where we're talking about it again less than two percent of the population that's being amplified and attacked and we're reinforcing those victim statuses and it's all gonna blend together in the end and pedophiles will be a protected class among certain people because the calling for their murder and some jackass going out and killing somebody, you know, for justice is going to make that a victim class, no different than the homosexual move. It, it's the same thing. They're just, they're just moving it into the next phases. This is what people don't see. Same these are billion, the these are billionaires who want you through their corporations to accept uh, 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 an anti-human doctrine to make you future profitable ones and zeros for their machine. They're, you, are the, you are the value, you are the fuel. You make this whole thing run for them. The moment you start just de divesting, I'm not talking about movements. That's all bullshit, okay? And I, I'm not putting anybody's beliefs down. I'm just saying your beliefs exist outside of movements. Your state of mind does not require you to identify with red and blue colors for authority, which they are now moving together. It's what I like to call the purple time. <laughs> It's a very unscientific, uh, you know, uh, catchphrase, but it's really the fusion of everything and it's blending and that's gender blending. It, it's, it's all the inversion of divinity, all the inversion of humanity, and it's going to cause this massive shift, but it's this awakening on the light and the dark side of unconscious human, cosmic, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to get too crazy about it, but it's, 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 uh, we play an important role here. Anyway, that's, that's my opening statement. I yield back the rest of my time to uh, the uh, distinguished gentlewoman from uh, Nevada. <laughs> well, one of the things that I really love about you, and this is in, you know, personal conversations and in different podcasts that I've listened to you, mm. you, so many people are so caught up in that divisiveness, mm. that even though what they think they're doing is courageous and heroic, and they're bringing awareness to whatever it is that they care about, it comes from a place that of them actually caring and passion. What happens yeah. is you end up getting divisiveness on both sides, where both sides really just want to understand each other and to mm. come together. And they want that mutual understanding but they're so busy categorizing each other and fighting that just like how you were saying, the, the collective consciousness branches off into these two sides 
that never have a chance of coming together because they're constantly in fear and traumatized and they're so easily manipulated that the next thing that comes up that tailors to both sides, it drifts even further apart. Mm -hmm. And I love how you talk about, you know, what we think is what happens outside of us. We're all manifesting everything that we see. It doesn't happen without our conscious consent. And, and I think that that's a key part that people aren't understanding is that, is that really the world that we want to live in is two sides always going at it. We know they're not going to stop, you know, throwing things at both sides. They love that we're divided. They're going to keep throwing a carrot over here and a carrot over there to push us further and further apart. Mm -hmm. There's never a goal for us to come together. And I think a lot of us forget that even the ones who are trying to do good, they end up becoming just like the perpetrators that they're fighting against because they end up, you know, talking about their passions from this place of anger and of, you know, this, this trauma that they're holding inside of them from feeling so hurt from everything that's coming at them all the time. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. I think you're so eloquent with how you explain collective consciousness and how that actually works. Right. Wow. Thank you for that. That's a really intelligent assessment. And it's also a really how to explain the world <laughs> in a way that everybody can understand it. That's really what we're, we're trying to, we're, we're looking. So let's just say, and I want you to remind me of some of this, cause I'm trying to think this out before I really just start talking. Okay. Say back to me what you want to know about, not just about collective consciousness, but the thing that you mentioned before about us creating it and something else you mentioned. We're constantly creating it by what we think, by what we're talking about, right, what we're right. investing our energy in. And we're not realizing that we're focused on two different things and that we're never going to come together. Collective consciousness is never going to be a thing the way that mm -hmm. things are going now. Right, right. Yeah. So, okay. So let's, let's, there's a reason why that is. Okay. In the, in the way that we, so let's, we got to establish some kind of realities, right? Because, because what does that mean? What, what do you mean? Well, we can't come together. Well, well you're telling me we got to come together, right? It's like, how can we come together if we can't come together? Right. That's, I mean, that's, yeah. I would ask it like, okay riddle me this <laughs> you know uh you're gonna tell me we're gonna come we're all gonna collectively consciously come together but we're not okay so what does that mean what it means is that we have to stop looking outside first okay so that's the hardest one what we don't realize is that our lives in this time and times before this really are met this is all metaphors we dream in metaphors you're dreaming a dream. You are dreaming a dream. Your soul and your spirit and however the whole thing works and inhabits and you get up the next morning and it's Groundhog Day, right? Okay, you're dreaming a dream of the life that you're living right now, which is all those things that you know and more. This is every one of us. And so in our own ignorant state in comparison to God. <laughs> he loves all of us so much. And I don't mean to say he, but God, the father and mother of all creation, love us so much that this is a gift if we can see it. We are living in the version of hell and we are being reminded of it for whatever the purpose is. Dark side has its purpose. There's so dark side, just I'm trying to define a lot of stuff, but keep yeah, if you could talk about dark dark and light, what does that mean to you? Well, so it this is really where it gets into space and time. And I wanna I wanna caution, not because I'm some expert guru here, okay? I just want to caution some members of the people that may be listening to this podcast, as I've heard from other people who start to talk about space and time and reality. If you're depressed you are suicidal or have had you know things in the past where you may have con or you are today and you know that you know hearing something that could throw you off uh trigger you outside of just trauma but like contemplating reality then i would 
some of the things that I'll talk about, I'm not trying to crack anyone's brain open. But what I would say is that uh, we are creating everything with every thought that we have. Everything that we think is a concept we're creating. And that is infinite consciousness. Every single thought that we're creating is creating new concepts, new realities, new possibilities, new potentials that exist in a field that all of us exist in and have a connection to. The distribution of it, how we uh, perceive it, how we interact with it, how we engage it. Now, it, it can get really fun. It can all sound fun, but it, it's distributive across a broad spectrum. When I say enlightened dark side, dark side is unconsciousness in its purest form. It is uncon unaware of, of, it can have its own thoughts and feelings about what it is, but that doesn't make it reality. So trauma, as you know, is sort of that unspoken pain that doesn't have words yet. So it doesn't yet have a resolution that it can go to because you're constantly guessing where it's coming from how to get rid of it, how to escape it, how to stop it from. Yeah. So we're, we're in this, um, we're in a battle in a sense with our, within ourselves to some degree and the outside world. But what we're not seeing is that there are layers, overlays. There's you, the divine being that you're born as when you come into this world and you literally are seeing your mother and father as God, they fill up your sky. They are these beings that according to science, real science, science that constantly tests itself and continues to evolve its theory <laughs> as new things come into the fray, not fit the agenda, right? <laughs> yeah. It challenges authority, kind of like God, uh, God's son, right? challenged authority didn't capitulate to authority on any form he didn't go to the churches folks he didn't go preach at the church he kicked those assholes out of there but he told the other ones they were just there to you know take from everybody so anyway it's a little side side thing but where i'm going with all this If you damage a child through negligence, you damage, the, you can hurt a child. You can put as much, let me just say this. Sexual abuse has its own signatures of what it registers mentally, emotionally, and physically in people. That is true. The way it manifests. The varying degrees unto which it is done, the frequency, the, the consistency, and the level of violence, right? How long duration over time, right? That's imprinting, hard, encoded, your daily routine, right? Recall to all of those places you have visited and then you become an adult and you take that out into the world we're talking from the human trafficking survivor sra survivor to child in south side chicago same thing different time and space doesn't know another world exists outside of the one it knows as a child so you're coming in, loving them, mom and dad in the sky, 24 seven, your eyes open, even when your eyes closed, that energy coming in. Their being is your being, you're attached. For the first year and a half, the child, according to science, the real science, the one that tests things, <laughs> according to that, the child, uh, sees its mother and father as an extension of itself. It does not know that it is a mom. Mom and dad, when mom and dad leave, child is freaked out because it does not have a moon and a sun to reflect its face back to it. 
its emotional reality is being created by the mom. There's been plenty of experiments done. Uh, there's one on YouTube you can still find where the lady is playing with the little girl, her little girl, and he's like, oh, and all of a sudden the guy says, okay, now stop. And she just goes stone cold, looking straight at her child with no emotion for the next three minutes. And you just see the child struggle, struggle, and then have a total, like it, it literally progresses to a meltdown because they don't have access to their mother. They don't have access to her emotions, which they are literally building and marrying through the synapses and the touches and the words and the sweetness and the beauty and the holding and the, and all that caressing that means so very much. You look at this time and what they've done to break our social and familial bonds over politics, religion, culture, a fake virus, a fake pandemic, let's put it that way, okay? Uh, 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 a pandemic that, let, let's just put it like another way, could they get anything through? Could they offer anything that they're offering us right now without the precondition of a pandemic before? No, they could not. And they suck at everything that they offer. Part of that is done by design. That's not to be underestimated. And this is where I want to shift to say that this is why we have to heal. This is really the key because it's not so much the catastrophe and all this hell um, is going to happen and take over the world and we're all going to be enslaved and oh yeah if you do nothing for sure mm -hmm. if you wait for the return of christ you better believe it people will sit on their their hands until the end and then it'll be too late and when i say it'll be too late i don't mean it'll be too late like nothing can be done it'll be too late where they are to do anything about it they'll get swallowed up by the authority collapsing in its old way or new doesn't matter anymore they want you to see all of this there was a reason they wanted you to look at this and be shown this it has a long-term net effect from wikileaks to everything in between we don't have to name those things that awareness was directed and there is a news cycle of things out there today that we you know, mentioned earlier that are baiting people into an authoritative right-wing response to the psychopath, pedophile left. By doing that, you will make it true. It, the harder thing is not what, and let me just explain this because I, I had to contemplate this a long time ago because I, I know where people are like, like tapping the brakes here. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, hold there. Hold there, cowboy. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> what you talking about? You, you, is, 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 is this the, is it that, is this that bullshit new age, you know, forgiveness speech? No, uh, First of all, and this is why I think I'm here during this time. I don't, I don't I'm not thinking myself that special. Okay. <laughs> but why I would even be born during this time to say this is that um, I had to consider that, that the rap sheet of my mother and father uh, in today's world being known by a certain segment of the population would land them um, definitely in prison and well if they didn't get away with it um or, or, or they'd be ordered to be killed so that when that's your mother and father and i let me just say this this is the hardest thing because it doesn't even make sense at all 
where I had to go with that was to look at them as children when, like me when I was little. Not to forgive them of their crimes. I hated them. I should have hated them to the point that I would be so mad to go kill somebody else. That's what happens. That's what happens when you're a serial killer, rapist, stalker, misogynist. These are crimes of passion. I know that's a, that's a really delicate word to use in those cases because they're not. But in the mind of that person, the narcissist is playing a game with its mother. It's trying to win the game that she set him up to play in his mind with her. His attachment to his mother is baked in and it's the first love that he knows. There's no way out of that. It's the first woman he loves because he's a child. Not because, and so if he has to hate his parents because he loves them so much, which is every child, this is why abuse occurs. Why, why abuse can happen is simply because the child has no other choice but to love them and pick right up and do it all over again like it didn't happen. Grooming, conditioning, all of that. It's just dress rehearsals for bigger expressions of the same thing, right? In steps and stages. So why do I say all this? Because if you go down, I said this, and I've been, I just want to be very clear. I've been consistent since 2018, since I've been out there, Sarah Westhall and Dave Janda and uh, others, the ones I did in 2018 when I was starting to promote a child's voice before it was taken down. I told everybody, I said, at the end of the day, and I didn't know the, the fullness that I would understand it to this day, but now that I see it manifesting and coming online, I am here to tell you. I said, as early as 2018, if we think that all of this is going to be over when all these people are marched off the stage, executed for the crimes that they've committed in the over decades, and uh, we all cheered on. And I, I'm just saying, like, if you want that storybook ending, uh, what did we learn? What did we change outside of going, this is a threat now and we have to get rid of it? And the thing is, it's a hard argument because you're going to have um, the, the left, one part of the left with the technology wanting to um, experiment on human beings, mind control, behaviors. Okay, this is not that this is this is this is just going to come into the consciousness. It's already there, but it'll it'll. Because what, so what you have to understand is that this whole organism, this whole collective is trying to figure out what it is from its own distortions at all times. No different than you and me individually. Okay, so the dimmest light wants to understand what it is, the brightest, and everything in between wants to figure out what it is as they're poisoning themselves and killing themselves and not realizing it and you all freaking the hell out and yelling at them as though you can change how they believe because you've shamed and guilted them not going to happen they're trying to shame and guilt you telling you you're a murderer and you know because you you want to protect babies this is what i'm saying it's the good versus the good you're never going to win this battle it's never meant to be won it's going to continue it's going to it's going to it's going to have its conclusion in this time and then it's going to fold into other times that's all that is they don't go through the trouble of doing all of this shit just so it can be like oh we're gonna win <laughs> Anyway, I, I'm, I'm saying a lot of stuff, but um, I want you to ask questions because I could go on forever. And, and there's, there's more, but this child abuse thing and our healing is the key to changing time. It has to go through the heart. There is no, there's no uh, time to change anything outside anymore. It's too big. It's, it's going to follow its course. It's their world. You, you have to let it learn to let it go and then take control of the areas that you've lost control. But if you've lost control in here, you've got to get control of these first before you can start going out and building, right?
telling people what to do. Otherwise you're going to find yourself in a cult. <laughs> that was what I was trying to say earlier. It's just that there was so much to say. So I'm going to shut up now and let you ask the question so we can narrow this down. Cause I don't know what I just said. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> but that's really the predicament that we're in, right? You have people, let's just say, you know, the people who are the, and rightfully so, you know, there should be some pure passionate emotions against what people are doing to children, right? Like that's yes. not something that once right. you learn, you can just sleep after that or for like there are levels of anger and negative emotions that come up from that. But what happens is like you said, everybody's kill pedophiles, do this, put them in jail. But what about all the other billions of people that are completely traumatized and passing down abuse unconsciously, right? Our world's being run by abused children who grew into abused and traumatized adults. And now they are extending the gen generational abuse outside of their family and they're proliferating it on all of us, right? And right. so if we don't take the time to step out of that and say, I'm gonna stop giving you my power, you are not gonna abuse me anymore, right? We have these like trauma bonds to these authorities. And so- yes people are holding on to these connections. And no matter, like you said, if it's Trump, if it's Biden, everybody's life sucks because these people are in office. Oh, now this person's in office, great. Now my life's gonna suck four years later. Oh my gosh, my life sucks even more now that this person's in office, right? We hand over our power as if these are our own abusers or somebody that we're in an intimate relationship with. And we let what they do affect us so much. Right. That it throws us off and now we become this unconscious victim and now we're proliferating our own abuse on letting our life spiral out of control right and so instead of stepping out and saying okay i'm obviously traumatized from all of this i am having an abusive relationship with this what needs to change in me so i can live a life and i'm that, that's not tied to these people right. right and ultimately i think that that's a message that nobody says more beautifully than you is we the second we stop giving them consent and break that trauma bond they don't exist anymore we're creating them you, you're people. one yeah you're it is a hundred percent and it, it sounds so impossible and implausible to people until you really just start to think about it. it's like okay so so like um so like I have a friend like, okay, so let's just use like a real practical example. There's Corey'sDigs.com. Okay. I recommend people go to Corey's Digs all Great the time. Website. Yes. Great website. You're going to find out all the agendas, the stuff they're doing in schools. You're going to find out what they have programmed in psychology for children in schools that's going on right now. Cause we've got a mental health crisis on our hands. So we've got to get that under control. Anyway, it's, the, the point being, guys, is we're trying to hold on to these things that we once had that really were illusions to begin with. They've become so corrupted to the point where it's obvious now, except to certain people who still hold their false beliefs on them. It's stories. It's, it's bedtime stories. This is Santa Claus. It's Santa Claus is Rachel Maddow. It's, it's Tucker Carlson. I, I mean, I'm not shooting down Tucker or any of that, but it, it's... They're the counter propaganda to the propaganda. It's false. It's falsehoods on both. When I say it's falsehoods, what does it mean? You're going to sit here and tell me, and I'm not, again, I just want to like to, 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 to temper it before people go, what? And they don't hear the rest of that, that story. You're going to get upset about one drag queen kids show in Texas and talk about like the sky is effing fallen, right? But you have just poured gasoline onto that and you have created media for the media to use as a weapon against us. And the reason I know that's true is I'd go, okay, guys, where were you with Amazing Desmond four years ago? Good Morning America. It's still out there on YouTube. Good Morning America brought the Amazing Desmond who was hanging out with party monster, you know, guy who had been accused of killing somebody, the mom. You know, this is all going on, ABC, Disney, you know, this is the whole corporate news media four years ago, bringing this kid out on a runway and him acting like a prostitute in the 
and the hosts of Good Morning America, these weren't the B team, this was the A team of Good Morning America who were all cheering the sun, okay? This is four years ago. And then they brought the direct. What, what I'm saying is we're angry now because the hope is running out. So we're focused on what this little issue over here that I can affect and what I'm doing basically is I'm going to shame you and guilt you and call you a psychopath and uh, declare that you're, uh, you know, a pedophile and you just start lumping that word into group. It doesn't evenly go. Uh, it doesn't just cleanly go through those channels, right? Because why? Because if inside of them, which you don't know, there is a little boy or a little girl in there that has been harmed by a parent, by an authority figure. Believe you me, this is their chance to finally get it out on somebody who deserves it. And that's not to say that they are not decent people who, this is always the problem, Emma, is we always think evil comes about because it's ill-intentioned to begin with, right. but really is a counteraction to our unaware behavior that is co-creating the whole thing and making it run and fuel this big battery that it's running off of, which is us and our emotions. Our emotions give it power, the trauma-based mind control, the news cycles, all of these news cycles, you can go to your local news and scale it all the way up. All of it is designed to ritualize cycles in time that they use through their warped occult ways to co-create the world that they want in the, du the dualistic system that appears one side versus the other. But it's even that is an inversion in itself. It's not, oh, well, that this side could only see what this side is doing at this kind of No, see, it's endless. It's, it's never meant to be solved this way. Now they're going into leftism is really anchoring uh, corporate, corporate authoritarian values okay that's that's one cut into this new reset okay so that's that's the energetic we're going forward with corporatized technology solutions to make your life better and we'll build back this way they'll they'll have they'll have a shelf life for that but really that's not the key that's for the old world that will still need more to suck out of it and more death to get out of it because it's believed to be the authority until it's not. And, and when and how that will be for those people does not depend on you. This is the, this is the thing I wish to offer to people. This is what I'm saying. You have to build a bridge to the future that you want. If you stay out here on the outside and condemn this world, it will be condemned you will partake in the condemnation of this place, this sacred place that we've been given for thousands of years to be here. And we play a role in this story of this time that we bring back all of our ancestors. And I don't mean this like in some you know, rousing speech way. I'm saying, honor thy mother and father, that fourth commandment, which is usually used for obedience to, into authority for which I have a middle finger that I'd like to extend to that because it always excuses no matter what they do to you. What I'm willing to bet is that I would get more people to honor the fourth commandment if I told them it was about honoring the child that your mother and father were born to be but could not do. You will do the work that will heal your generation, their generation, and their mother and father's bloodline. That you put your life on the line for that because that's the sacredness of your being. That all that that was fought for. This is not about uh, holding conflicting views of your mother and father. The paradox that they left you to deal with, however you understand it. Mine was... I'll just tell you like the, the worst of the worst, one of the worst is that everything was lust. 
And that was what love was. Everything was lost in between near-death experiences as a child, first four years. Um, you look at my mother and father, pictures of them as young men and women, and you would never, ever see how that was even possible in my world, let alone theirs. And more importantly, you go and you see movies like The Notebook, and I have my own interpretation on that, but that's not really what this is about. It's when I saw that I saw my mother. I saw her as a young woman again, and I wept for her. This is a woman who violated my body and allowed me to be violated by my father. And you have letters and cards and all these things that tell you how much she loved you but she allowed that to happen. And you can hate God for a long time because of that, for a real good reason. Um, what I tell people is that you, you, you must start to begin to reread that book, pick it up, the movie that you lived, and see the divinity in every single thing that you survived. That's why you're here. That's what makes it real it's not about eternal suffering it's the transcendence of it be the generation that leads the way it changes the consciousness by coming into new possibilities of things that were always there they were always there we just didn't see them these are doors that we were blind to these are keys that we didn't have you <clears throat> the part that people would ask me and, and let me just say this like I, when I call healing or seeking the truth or anything like that that's a perpetual mystery that you get to if you want to expand if you want to be you want to call yourself a vegetable be a vegetable explore the life of being a vegetable I mean I'm not trying to mock anybody but what I'm saying is <laughs> You know, look, look at it like this. You're a lawyer, you're a doctor, you're a teacher, you're this. You're imagining yourself to be that. So is everybody else, but you're not that thing. You're not just that thing. That's a function of multitudes of things. But they're not, that's not who you are. And that's not your role in this life. It's, it's far greater than the one that is on the screen it's greater than the one that is even in your house or even outside. There's something bigger. The greatest, the greatest, um, I will tell you the greatest adventure you'll ever find is within yourself because it's beyond your imagination. It's beyond what you can imagine. The moment you meet God, uh, and when I say the, the day you meet God, uh, the day you know God exists is the day it changes your life. And sometimes you have to be reminded two or three times after that because you doubt it. You doubt yourself and, and you don't believe you're worthy of love sometimes because, because you still have hatred there or something that's really sad in you and very painful. And, it, and it's not meant to be there. It's actually not. When I say it's not, it's not meant to hold you in place. It's meant to be your teacher, your wisdom. There's a thing about the Bible, and I mean, people can talk about the Bible in all sorts of ways. I believe reading Christ's words are the most powerful. I don't care what people's understanding of Jesus is or is not. Um, Son of God personified what if and this this is where i'd get a lot of pushback from christians but i'd i'd i'd, I'd, I'd wager with them that after i could talk to them for a while they would see what i'm talking about as nothing new age many people in history have thought of themselves to be jesus christ gurus all of this and and uh you know, and some have started really crazy fucking cults to, you know, okay. What I can tell you is that 
what if the story of 2000 years ago is still going on right now? And all that he promised would be fulfilled could be if we realized that we were the true and worthy sons and daughters of the living creator and we began to live like it in the full embodiment of that path rather than to see ourselves as less than and him be the perfect and only thing that we should aspire to be but can never be yet he says you will do my acts and greater you will and why would that be possible and i'm just asking you to consider or anybody for that matter is not what you see today but beyond what 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 would you be seeing if you saw a man healing people with his touch and his words in today's time? What would you do if you saw a man do that or a woman? We're doing that all the time. We don't see the miracles because we're not invited to look at them on the news. The miracles are the space, the void that you create and fill it with that's a space you create it's it's words it's an idea it flashes emotions that register true 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 good 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 this is good stuff right mm -hmm. why because it it reminds us of those things that we used to be the truth about our divinity is not rooted in a mechanized cynical hyper materialistic hyper sexualized and violent culture the psychopaths are going to try to prove their world true and they're going to say that nothing will ever come back to being the same of course it won't but it will come back to one at a certain point in time how and why that will be and when that will be no one knows the thing that is most difficult in this time, Emma, is that people have to be mindful of beliefs being where people feel reality is and not trying to make them see it your way because there's going to be plenty of other things where people are going to be divided by and check out along the way because it will be too much to imagine how deep things can go. Yet the simplicity, and this is why I'm telling you now, is the simplicity in your lived experience is the thing that shatters all beliefs because you are the model that proves it to be true and the belief cannot be sustained anymore. It'll have to be held up with lies. So everything that you guys create from here on out in your mind is coming online somewhere. Consciousness. So if you think about what they've done to us, they've made everyone really traumatized and take literal interpretations as fact according to your own understandings according to your own beliefs according to your own preconditioned pre-primed attachments to institutions and authority unwinding all of that is not something you can do just through information there is going to be an awakening of information but there's also going to be the real challenge which is the awakening of the soul and the higher conscious higher spirit it's the 5d ascension that they all talked about i mean i i'm, I'm not putting anybody down what i'm saying is the battle is on between a world of narcissism which is inner child defending itself through its understandings of itself in relation to how it perceives the outside world. Yeah, domestic terrorism, school shootings, climate change, heat wave. You see what I mean? It's a stimuli of, of psychological events to condition behaviors and thought processes, and they don't even see it, how it's happening. And they can be used as one side versus another to sculpt and shape the other side to its prime predisposition, predisposition, which is kill them all. Then it's going to be, we got to stop these from coming in to our society, right? Now we have to pre-profile psychological behaviors and track genetic codes of people who have predispositions of pedophilia and it just goes on from there and you're just building prisons for yourself 100 because what it is this is it it's saying 
human beings do not possess the capacity at a divine level to self-organize. This whole time that they're giving you is to make you cynical and less trusting of humanity through the loss of your institutions and the loss of authority. If you fall for that psychological trap, you'll stay down in there waiting for their answer. If you take back your authority and use this time, the void, the time that you do have, there is one less person in the system to operate off of. It's just not, this is not about making mom and dad see it your way. That's what we're, we're, we're addicted to do. We're addicted to go to that authority and say, Joe Biden, why don't you do this? Kamala Harris, why aren't you doing this? Trump, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Those are all questions that you need to start asking yourself. Stop asking them to answer them for you. That's why you're in the situation you're in. That's why we're here. We've been asking them to answer our needs forever. And the truth is, is that whether you had them for four years under that guy or not, it, 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 they're not going to let you, they have shown you they're not going to be consistent in letting you have the things that you've earned. Okay. So if you're stubborn and you go, well, I'm going to show them and I'm going to go and get mom and dad and I'm going to beat the shit out of them. And then they'll stop, you know, acting this way. Good luck to you. These are mothers and fathers who are drunk drivers, they're drunk drivers, and you're in the backseat and you're codependent and you're begging them for your life to just stop the car, slow down, pull over, have some mercy and give you the keys and let, you know, switch, switch seats. Ain't going to happen. Psychopaths do not have an off switch. They have a clever switch. They have a, a smarty switch. Their whole thing is... This is the real danger that most people don't consider because most people go, well, thinking and all of this, why do people choose these things? When you don't have that feeling in you, when you've been, let's put it this way, when the child has been so, When the child has not been able to attach itself to its mother's love and has been cut off from its mother's love, you're going to push them to the, light, the razor's edge of being a psychopath, genetic or otherwise predisposed. You're going to take a sociopath and graduate them, basically, is what you're going to do. Because a sociopath, all they care about is not getting caught. Psychopath doesn't give a flying fuck. Those people that are committing all those crimes out there, killing all those people indiscriminately, not caring that people see them, that there's law officers around, you know, those are psychopathic behaviors. Those, those are people whose, whose uh, empathy is shut off. And like I said, all of this and more can be thought of as we just need to get rid of these people and make that problem go away. And believe me, the cities will do that for you for the very reason that, again, like I said, you are, you are asking for greater surveillance. You are asking for them to get a hold of human behavior and organize it and play. This is their agenda. I, I'm just trying to tell people like, look, you can be as afraid as you want. You can say, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, but if they, if, if their world does not have customers, they can't do it. They have to come for you. I mean, there may be a time that they will, but what I'm saying is you will have a chance if you've been, like, it, it, this is the last thing I wanna say, cause I know I've been revolving around this for a while, but what I was saying about condemning, if you don't build the new world and the people that are going into the old one, thinking they're going into the new one, the nostalgia, the sentimentality that's all baked into that, you know, Super Bowl reminiscing of the last 30 years of me, all of that, the nostalgia of it, all those people will wake up at some point and they're going to remember their friends and all the people that they left or that left them one way or the other. It's not about whose story it is, but if they ever come back to you, as I've had people come back to me in this time, just in this short period of time of the people who had it all figured out, not that they had it all figured out. That's a very artificial way to measure people, people who were awake who are going through really tough times inside. 
And this is a humbling place to be because it's going to drive a lot of people insane. Unfortunately, this is a tipping point that people will reach and then they can't take enough. And so shootings become more, see, we're not, we're arguing over things, the defunding of the police, the, 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 the releasing of the criminals. This is what it was all about folks under the guise of this whole bullshit. And so we are cleaning up the mess, but again, authority is going to take care of itself first before it it's going to clean up its image and what it needs to do in order to organize things and then be repackaged and resold to the population to go okay you guys heard us finally and yes it all collapsed and oh man what a shit show yeah it was uh, never want that to happen again okay what do you guys need more money more surveillance more technology more of my consent on the blockchain yep or do I sign up? Oh, you need, you need a, you need a digital scan. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know. I, I want to and, and take my eyes with it and, and then get my voice and all your intellectual property. That's where it's going. You get to lose this body and become a bit and zero ones and zeros in their, you know, metaverse universe someday that they, uh, I, I know that sounds so crazy in science fiction and people freak the hell out and like, oh my God, what are we going to do? It's like, don't, don't be there. Right. Don't be there. That's it. If you're going to go in and fight it, then know that you're not going to destroy it. Um, you may end up extending its life and making it angrier. Uh, and it'll fight back harder. I don't, I, I mean, I, what I'm saying is where do you want to spend your time? In, in whatever time you have in your life, where, where do you want to, like in this dream, how much, how much do you want to dream in this dream? Do you want to dream destructive dreams? They want you to, believe me, they are, they are, uh, we've got Westworld coming out uh, with season four. We'll show that clip here in a second. We've got Westworld coming out with season four and it's all about inversion. And it's, it's, um, I, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I haven't seen it, so I don't know, but I, I, the themes that are there are all things that call upon people in this time and Dolores Maeve and, um, I forgot the name of the native American character. And the second one were three consciousness during this time. Dolores is the one that's going to go in and fight the system, right? She's angry as hell and she's going to kick ass and take names, you know, and, and get, and get to the supreme, computer to destroy it right because she wants to free people that's her drive and she sees she also wants to see the beauty in the world but she also sees the ugliness and she becomes part of the ugliness as well in order to defeat it right she ends up having to die kill herself in the last one Maeve is the one that goes back in because she was a prostitute I'm just using that term okay um saloon saloon uh what would just Emma? Just give me the word. I'm gonna be that. You know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be that guy. You know what you're gonna do? You're like John Paul Rice. Twenty years later, and then all of a sudden, I'm gonna start saying all these epitaphs and stuff. You're like, <laughs> we don't say that anymore. <laughs> you're like, you're an old man now. It's like, well, we just don't tell him. You know, he says Negro, but you know, it's like <laughs> exactly. Okay, I want to get it right. So please. Because they're like, how oh, we really love him leading the movement. He's got to stop using that word. Okay, <laughs> please, please just tell me what is the correct. I could say human trafficked woman, but I want to contextualize it to the story of the. Uh, I mean, victim's kind of a good word or just, I don't know. I mean, that I'll could... use the left's word. I'll just call her a sex, sex worker, worker, even though they, huh? I just would say sex worker, sex worker, but with the context of not like it's an empowering position. Right, right, right. right. The left uses that as its empowering position, like sex worker, like, oh, this is virtuous. And, you know, Johns and pimps are just, you know, like, no, there are sex worker rights that, yes, need to be addressed, but you don't just go here, you know, <laughs> more of it, please. We got to empower these women. <laughs> anyway an oxymoron isn't it right i know and we could deal with that for days oh god um so okay so mave is the one that had a recall of her previous life in westworld the other season 
And she goes back in because she remembers being a mother and loving her daughter and the loss of her daughter made her want to go back in and search for her. Okay. And then the Native American was the one that said there was another door to another, there was a door here to another world. Okay. Well, I want to, I want you to play this one video, um, which is that third one that I gave you, uh, the one about, you know, the one you said that really summed it up. Well. Yeah. Yeah. The tribute to Ford. And I just want people to understand that there is a aspect to these shows and movies when you start uncovering the messages in them. It's, it's all to make you feel as though you're trapped. Okay. So, and, and, and this is how gods sort of rule things when they have the upper hand in their mind that, so basically what I, what I want to say is I think the person who made this is absolutely brilliant. There's a met, these are all metaphors. This would be, I think the Luciferian version of what uh, someone, and you may want to put the volume all the way up. I don't know how loud it is on the recorder, but um, imagine this to be kind of like Lucifer's message, a farewell message to uh, human beings. And there's a truth in here about what all of us, I believe, are going to be on a mission to do, which is to find something that we love in this time. So with that said, uh, please play that and then we can talk about it. You got it. Do you know where you are? You're in my dream. It's not a business venture, not a theme park, but an entire world. Everything in this world is magic, except to the magician. I built all of this. Designed every part of this place. Every inch of it. Every blade of grass. Create life itself. Out of chaos. Using only one tool. A mistake. I have every right to wander through its rooms and chambers and halls. To change it if I choose, even to burn it down. I'm not the sentimental type. You can't play God without being acquainted with a devil. Divine gift does not come from a higher power, but from our own minds. Do you know what that means? It means that we are done. That this is as good as we are going to get. I have a celebration to plan. Have a new story to tell. Something deeper, something hidden perhaps, a metaphor, we call it a journey into night, it begins with the birth of a new people and the choices they will have to make, they discover something they imagine no one had ever noticed before. Something they fall in love with. That elusive thing. Heart. The way their existence is pure in heart. Free to be burden of self now. Free here at my control. Sad to say. This will be my final story. So I hope you will enjoy this last piece very much. An old friend once told me something that gave me great comfort, something he'd read. He said that. Mozart, Beethoven, and Chopin never died. 
They simply became music. His name was Arnold. Yep. Wow. Yep. I cried probably like, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a sensitive type, I guess. Oh, I know I am, but I cried about that for, I don't know, quite a few days, just contemplating it because I knew that certain things that you just accept and um, really, Emma, what you, what we are all dealing with is a spell of the fear of dying. And this is what activated all of this shit um, is that we've been building to a fear of death from 9-11 to now, really before this. I mean, this is not, this is what we consider time. And really what we're talking about is psychological events that have been laid out in a sequence and done in loops, really not, not linear timeline. I mean, it's laid out in a linear timeline of years, decades and all that. But really, if you look at it, the generational gaps uh, from the boomers all the way down to Gen Z and everything separating in between as it's starting to come apart. Now, this has all been pre-programmed, pre-designed. They reaped it all so that they could sow it. So here, here's what I'm saying to people, because because this is where people can get crazy about end of the world predictions and all this kind of stuff, right? I mean, because you, you are, I mean, you are uh, from from one standpoint, right? You are seeing the world of Satan manifest in its in a, in an in an open expression that it hadn't before, but it had been building to get here. You know, Church of Satan was doing, you know, protests out in front of churches, you know, five years ago. You know, all, all of this, the, this convergence, if you will, right? The forces of evil. What are the forces of evil? Well, they're unconscious. They're, they're working in concert together, but not, here's the thing, not naturally. The forces of evil can't come together in harmony with each other. They have to be thr thrust a threat has to be thrust upon it in order for it to, to, to be righteous in its expression of evil. Satanism for the, I'm just saying is this is for your average street person. When I say average street person, I'm talking about somebody who came from a conservative Christian home whose mother and father were abusive to them and they, they don't believe in God and that authority because the two people that were supposed to love them modeled a lie. Christians need to come to an understanding that yes, there are parents who really did crappy things in the name of God to their children. And this isn't about Christianity or Muslims or any of that other crap that people we can start going down the list. It's like, you know what, Here, here's what it is. Like, I'm not going to walk into South side of Chicago and tell them what's going on, but I could tell them and say, okay, you guys want to stop killing each other, stop beating the shit out of your kids but I'm a white person. I can't do that. Right. But that, but, but, but why is the media allowing it to happen? Because that they can't say that to them because that blows their whole cover on having that problem be there till it's time to solve it till it, till it's gotten so outrageous and so crazy. Somebody finally elects somebody to get, you see what I mean? That this is all, it has already happened. 18 years old. It already happened. They're committing crimes at 18 and, and they go to jail or they don't. It's already happened. Antifa, BLM, doesn't matter what you're understanding. Your belief in it makes it real for, for the messaging. Yeah, oh, compassion and all that. But are you marching on the streets, burning shit to the ground and, and $2 billion worth of property? And I'm not even talking, they're not even targeting white businesses. They're just targeting business, business. Minority owned businesses took a bigger hit during the summer of love in 2020 to George Floyd, minority owned businesses took the biggest hit because of BLM. That is a fact. That's not even like, like people are, I, I watched news, new, not the news, but the, the people saying like the black lady going, what the hell are you all doing? Why are you burning down our community? I have to get, I, I can't take my bus now to the store that I used to go. 
you see what I mean? This is this is not what's going on though, right? Because I've got to be the conspiracy guy who breaks down why the media lied about this guy. And you see what I mean? It just fuels the whole damn thing. And then people look at you and they go, how can you be so damn insensitive to this? And I'm going, okay, uh, let's just take a step back just for a second. I, I, wanna, I wanna say this is like teaching people. Rodney King, 1992, probably before you really came into watching news, but I'm a 45 year old guy this year. So I get to tell about it, but Rodney King was part of my childhood. It was in my yearbook, you know, the LA riots. Okay, here's what it is, metaphors, right? scaled to 2022 1992 2022 what's the significance 1992 rodney king and motors gets the shit kicked out of him it's on tape it goes to trial they acquit all the officers even though it was a beating and he was a motorist that was his rodney king motorist that he became a worldwide known man in history okay mostly because of that trial but the subsequent fallout of this this is pre-oj right 1992 the verdict comes out all of them are acquitted there's an intersection in la normandy and i thought what the other one was uh, people will look it up where there was a riot and all the camera crews and the helicopters went and put it on live TV, broadcast it in loops all over the country for the next whatever weeks, right? Well, in the meantime, that one corner was within 24 to 48 hours all over the city with fires and vandals and everything. What we're doing, we haven't realized, is called the imitation game. We are imitating for them. We are amplifying. We are amplifying their message through our channels that we think are free speech. We're the media now. You are the media now, and you have a responsibility of what energy you put into things because at the end of the day, we all know that online, whatever you take of it is not solving the world's problems. It is feeding egos. It's feeding narcissistic positions. It's reinforcing um, it, nobody is questioning anything. Nobody is asking, hey, what do you mean by that? Uh, there, there's, no, there's no considerations for other potentials. That gets snuffed out. That's not the stuff that gets retweeted. The, the, good, the good spiritual work and all that. It's really nice. I mean, if you've got people to go, oh, thank you, thank you, you know, love it, love it. But bad news travels fast there in that place and you coming from behind to try to heal it. I'm not saying it's an, I'm just saying that's not where the real work's going to be done. That's the program. Now the program shifted from television, newspaper, all the old legacy stuff to online now in tribes, in columns and silos. It's not cohesive anymore. It's able to break it off and create other realities. They, this is the thing, the Hunger Games thing. Okay, the only thing I want to correct with your introduction, and I didn't want to do it right away. I did not produce the Hunger Games. I worked for the man, Joseph Drake, who taught me under Juno, The Grudge, Harold and Kumar, Go to White Castle, and some other films over four and a half years. He went on to do the Hunger I learned under him a whole lot of stuff that I wouldn't have learned. And I don't mean like secrets and all that kind of shit. I just mean, <laughs> I was just saying, Oh, what tell us, tell us, what did you learn? No, about business and, and who was real in that world that I was venturing into as trying to be a producer at 25 years old. Um, but, but the point of the hunger games is that the metaphors, not the storylines, not the timelines hunger games is, is a, um is a future state they would like to have uh it would take a while to get us there but they are definitely moving us in those directions and steps where again we haven't seen the finish of the system the the, the system so the system is not going to hit a pause button 
the system is going to go until it's exhausted itself. And then a new system is going to come in and replace it to keep it going. It, they, will it have all the features and benefits of the things that people want who are begging for a new system? Probably. I would think that you'd want to get as many customers on the new system as possible and offer them some free credits or, you know, jet debt jubilee. I'm not saying it's what's going to happen. I'm just saying to entice the customer to come online and join the clan, <laughs> the cult of, of the world, um, the corporation, right? They're transferring the face from authority in the institutions of our government and on TV into the corporation. That's authority because it because it's the last thing that they can play financially where, oh, so-and-so has such and such and has this big a market share, therefore it must be look at look at the stock market. This is not this is this is the phenomenon of the stock market. It's like, yeah, you know that every time in the end, Lucy is gonna pull that football away from you, Charlie Brown, but you're still gonna ask her to set it up for you and you're gonna run towards it to kick it. And she's still gonna grab it and take it from out. Yeah. In the one moment that you've teed it up for yourself to hit a home run, they're going to come in and take it from you if if necessary. This is the key. If too many people start fighting and they can't get control, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like they're, the whole thing, the name of the game is illusions of faces and control. That's it. I, I know I keep talking about this, but I'm trying to dissect it in words. And that's like almost impossible, right? To give you like, here's the world. <laughs> <laughs> but um. But this is what it, what it all points back to is no matter how far you're going to go into it, it better point back to something that you can do and that's positive. And this isn't about just thinking about being positive. It's about feeling positive. Feeling positive is very different than thinking positively. Sometimes feeling positive, you have to go through sorrow. You have to go through uncertainty. I'm not saying that's right. I'm saying that that's really the only teacher that we have available when there's no authority to guide us. Yeah. I said to find God, you may have to curse God. How many people in the Bible? I mean, who does God call? The most effed up people, <laughs> you know, to serve him in, in a time of need. I'm just asking, like, I'm not trying to get people to go, oh my God, I'm going to go over and read my Bible right now. But I guarantee you, if you did, and you started to see things through a divine way, and that all of these are psycho, like, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible. I'm just, I'm not here to tell people anything because God only knows there's just threads of people who will get into like this Bible and this and this and this, you know, it's like, okay, let me just tell you like this Hebrew to Greek. That was the first translation that we know of. Correct. All right. There was in Hebrew, the word inspired in Greek, the words were translated from the original inspiration, the divine inspiration. So you lose some of that carbon copy in that carbon copy, you lose some of the words and the meaning. And you're going to sit here and tell me 2000 years later, we've preserved all of that language when we have a false world out there that twists language around. Oh, but the holy book, it's just, come on, dude. Like, I'm not saying it's false. What I'm saying is take it, extrapolate from the words it's not rich. It's been ritualized in you to just go through the motions, read the story, relive the suffering of Christ. I'm just telling you, we could talk for days about the Vatican. What does the Vatican do? The Vatican is telling you you're a sinner. You're unworthy. You need to go to confession. You need these seven sacraments. You need all of these things that the church can offer. But it tells you, you want to be like, that guy up there on the cross but you don't you don't want to end up like that that's hell he told the thief two thieves at the end the good thief and the bad thief remember that he tells him at the end all the bad thief said to him was don't forget me and Christ told them, you will join me today in paradise. The other one wanted to get out of this world. 
He said, if your God is so powerful, take me off this cross as it will you. These are the polarities that were, will come back to the center again. We're in Empire Strikes Back. When Han Solo is about to be frozen, tells Leia he loves her, says there'll be another time. There's going to be another day to fight. It's got to be the way of the Jedi. It's got to be the way of compassion and love, not the way that Disney has inverted all this bullshit. What I'm saying, and I'm just saying because Star Wars is sacred to me. George Lucas in the original trilogy is the divine trinity right in there. It's, it's there. It's 100% there. The universal truths about the light and the dark side are all in Yoda in Luke's journey. Luke's journey is he, he dreams of an adventure outside. He's a hero's journey. He dreams of an adventure outside of himself beyond the stars that taking place far away. And he wants to go up against the dark side the empire wants to take it down, wants to become a hero in that story. And boy, is he sure as hell get the adventure of a lifetime to become a hero in that story in the least way he expected it, but had to earn it. And so what does he do? It, it's like the first one is just full of the archetypes of self-sacrifice. The Ben Kenobi is the wise one that knows it's, it's temporal form. So he sacrifices himself to be with Luke in a divine spirit that guides him, his conscious. These are all reflections of the same story within people, but we put them in different. This is my gift to be able to understand this in story that these are all just different sides of a personality talking to each other in different characters and having a conversation to find out what it is that it's trying to search meaning in. But in the second one, it's very powerful because um, it's inversion. Empire Strikes Back, everything is backwards. And Luke um, realizing that Darth Vader is the embodiment of evil, it has to be destroyed. And so he goes up against it aggressively and he ends up losing his arm or his right hand. And he almost, he renounces his father is vader's claim that he's his father right even if it's true and he comes to understand that it may very well be true at the end because he knows it to be true in his feelings and he takes a greater leap of faith and he says i won't go and serve i'll literally could die but i'm gonna drop i'm gonna fall back fall forever back and um it's his sister that comes and saves him just saying this, Return of the Jedi is probably the most profound because um, it's really the hero story and really what all of the occult, I call it the dark side of the occult, uh, uses to manipulate us, which is our parents. And the psychology of young boys and their father and mother too, but their father... The father plays a really significant role in shaping the reality. The dad of the family sets the bar, right? As to what is true or not. The only thing that a child then has to do is if mom is going to emotionally comfort the child, knowing that the father may, may have made the right, wrong choice or believing that he made the right one, but still not making her son or her daughter pay for the decision that hurts the kid, disappoints them. Because then the kid feels like they've disappointed their parents too. It's a double whammy. It's a bitch. <laughs> yeah. But but the thing is, is that um, with Luke um, in Jedi, he has to go and he now accepts that Vader is his father, but that he doesn't want him to die. Doesn't want to kill him this embodiment of evil that is after him and wants him dead, wants to kill him, wants to bring him in front of his authority, the emperor, the ultimate evil, even more evil than Darth Vader, his father. So he, in an act of faith, he says there has to be another way, a new way. 
So if there's a new way, what is the new way? It's that he won't fight his father. He won't. Um, he won't attack him. He won't hate him. He feels the conflict in him. He feels the good in him. And Luke Skywalker ends up saving the day and the galaxy by not killing anyone that day because even though the emperor, and this is really what evil is, is a provoker. The emperor tried to provoke Luke. And when he finally got him where he wanted him, he engaged in his battle with his father and Luke still resisted his dad. It was Vader who tried to provoke Luke and said, if you will not be turned then perhaps your sister will, which was Leia. And that's when Luke drew his lightsaber and yelled no, like a guttural no. This story is the story of molestation. I, I know that'll color a lot of people's, um, if you really look at the dynamic of Luke Skywalker, Leia, uh, the incest, I'm not saying that that's what Lucas intended, nor is that a satanic um, <laughs> agenda <laughs> you know oh my god it's everywhere oh my god there no what <laughs> what 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 couldn't be said in that story was that uh luke skywalker was born of a bad seed it's a metaphor but really he was born of a bad seed from perversion that's the dark side I mean, the, the, the ultimate route, right? The ultimate evil is the perversion of the truth. And so it has to be maintained by facade, lies, cleverness, provoke, provocation, uh, impulse, slower energy, energetic, vibrational, emotional, emotional, non, non-thought based. You know, thoughts can betray you. Feelings can be twisted. All of those things. This is word. This is just like words. Words today, identity politics, same thing. It's the same thing. It's just emotional words that are. Okay. So with the emperor, the emperor had said Luke would be turned and join him. And when Luke relinquished his hatred for his father and saw that he was about to become the very hatred that he himself tried to avoid in punishing his father for what his father had said and done and that he was willing to turn his sister he still was a monster even when luke said i won't fight you he still became a provoking monster to tell him i'll take your sister Vader's hand gets cut off because this, this is a symbolic of molester. You know, I'm just saying the hand that touched, that violated. The thing that art creates this thing where we try to find the divine in the darkness. We, we try to find love in the darkest of places and we use our imagination to create it, a new time. Luke said he was a Jedi just like his father before him and that he would not be turned. And then the emperor said, if you won't be turned, you'll be destroyed. And he proved to his father in those moments that it was the love that Luke had for him that changed that time, that space where he left the Vader literally sacrificed himself to protect his son and why that is and how that is. And, does that happen every single time we want it to? No, but it does. And we believe it does. That's why we keep going back to those movies because there's something truthful there. There's something it's telling us about in mythology. It's telling us something universal about us. There's endless stories, endless metaphors, endless mythologies, predictive programming. Sure, there is predictive programming, but there's also the divine and everything. You go back to Pinocchio, right? I mean, we could, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and do a breakdown because I haven't studied it, but I, I, know, I know, I know Pinocchio. It's not like, oh, okay. You know, I'm in the film industry. I've seen Pinocchio and I, I get it. I get it. It's like, oh, the lost boys and the asses and all that. Understand that Hollywood came about as a way to control the divine truths that would have naturally occurred over time. 
they helped shape the propaganda accepting two world wars and a great depression that had a traumatizing effect on all of our mothers and fathers for which the 1960s gladly plugged into that they also did as a CIA operation on women and the, the men and the family. Um, all of the precondition of that was PTSD coming back from the soldiers who served overseas in two world wars. We didn't have post-traumatic stress syndrome di uh, uh, diagnosed and we didn't have treatment for it. So what do we do? All of those people that grew up in a generation where there were no uh, there were no child labor laws. Then they had children that went off and served and, you know, fought in wars, stuff that like things that families could do 180 years ago to children that half of them would be in jail for today or, you know, uh, awaiting um, ex execution. Some parts of the world, Nazi Germany came about not because of, well, and we can talk about it. I don't want to get into the but the psychology of Nazi Germany came into being through authority of a protector, a savior, in opposition to what? Communism. These are cycles. They're reactions. They come about because psychologically they speak to the themes of that time in the collective consciousness. Mother Germany is a metaphor for his mother, Hitler's mother who allowed him to be beaten every single day within an inch of his life as a child and his father was a half half Jewish. He relived his entire childhood as a psychopath. Not seeing that what he believed in his distorted view of love, distorted view of reality plugged into all the other distortions of the other children who had come from families during that time where infant mortality was 60, 70%. The parents could decide, you know, like talking about like today and, and killing a baby after it's born, you know, legitimately through abortion. Back then you could do it without the law. You could abort a child, throw it out into the snow and let it die. And they did. And <clears throat> babies were mistreated. Our our compassion, our human, I'm, I'm just trying to inspire people to like look back on time and look at how all of this has evolved as they've retarded you. Every step of the way that they have tried to break you apart in different phases, all of those fathers, I'm just saying on the whole, you give PTSD and alcohol, you're going to have sexual abuse, you're going to have violence, you're going to have beatings. You give it to this group, you message it a certain way. You give it to this group, you message a certain way. You look at blacks and whites, there's really not much difference. The culture is that makes it look like it's separate, but really crime distributed is really socioeconomically is the same. Eight to 10% white collar crime, eight to 10% poor. The only difference is, is that it's the resources. One can manipulate financial systems and, and, and bring tire companies down through their, you know, their criminal mindset. The other one has to go around the store and rob the liquor store. That's it. It's, it's the only difference. The world that we live in is an inverse world. It's, it's not, it was not designed for us to make the story whole and fix the story and then go around and tell everybody. There's going to be plenty of that crap going on for the next several years. And most of them are going to turn into cults. Unfortunately, it's the way it goes in times like these, when they're trying to wage revelation on you. It's really what we're talking about. It's like where people are like, Oh, it's the end times. Well, yes, you're in it, but it's not absolute. This is the key. Okay. There's always been these things throughout all of history, resets, all of this. You arguing over the past and trying to straighten that out with people who have beliefs entrenched emotionally in places that are deeply seated now. You are not going to save them and pry them out of their beliefs and, 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 and rescue them when you're a drowning person too. If you have, if you have your children raised, sanely outside of schools 
you want to learn how to homeschool, there's plenty of stuff online still that people can get. Corey'sdigs.com has all those solutions. I was talking about all the agendas. There's a tab in there, Corey'sdigs.com. Go to solutions and just start learning and reading about what you can do yourself and what other people are doing. And this is just a drop in the bucket. Guys, there are 300 million plus people in this country in the United States alone. And the people that vote, the people that actually vote was the most ever, you know, in the last, I, I'm not, I'm not here to dispute the election. I'm saying more people voted in the last two elections than previous ones, even probably more than Obama in 2008. Okay. And, 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 and stuffed ballot, whatever, it doesn't matter the volume of people, but here's what I'm going to uh, try to explain to people. Was that the majority of the country? The numbers that voted, was it a majority of the country that voted? In consideration of the population. I mean, we could say, all right, I'm just going to add it, but you know, you go 81 and 74 and you get 155 million. Now it's like half. It's half, yes. but that's the most I, I'm saying, it, accepting it at face value. Mm -hmm. That is the most it's ever been. So what happened to all the other half of the country? And what are they doing? What are they doing? They're not voting for any of this. They're not voting for the most important elections of our lifetime, supposedly. What are they doing? What is the other 150 million doing? That's a very good question, isn't it? There's probably a lot of them that are poor beyond belief and have given up. Oh, you better believe it, sure. But there may be some in there, and I think more than now, ever before, there are some that are going, nothing in this for me anymore. It's very sad because, um, well, it's sad that we have to let go of these things because they, uh, they shaped our lives actually. This is where they can claim credit for giving us all of this wonderful place that they have been a part of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've watched we've watched you nurture and grow yourselves, you know, so so incredibly to <laughs> to perfection. You know, uh, that's not for us to worry about. That's a very small group of people. It's a hive mind. It's mind control warfare. This is World War Three, folks. World War III is the world of beliefs. There's going to be multiple ones. There's going to be worlds within worlds. There's going to be worlds within worlds within worlds in metaverse space alone. And you fighting that and trying to stop it is not going to stop it from evolving into collect. These are fads. These are trends. They have to sow them. If you, if you resist them, you're giving energy to their existence that they even, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound if no one is there to listen and hear it? Well, it did, but here's the thing. Did the tree fall? Well, yes, it did, but did you hear it? No, you didn't. So you didn't know that it fell. You'd have to be informed from some other source that it fell, which is the news, which says it happened. And then it becomes real and it becomes part of your day and it becomes part of the way you see the world and the way you think about the world and the way you feel about the world and what you say about the world and what you say to other people when you see them wearing that mask. Presumption. Presumption. Preconditioned perception. This person's an idiot. This person's smart. This person is safe. This person is dangerous. Just from a mask. Mind control. Divide you up. Smaller and smaller groups over time with your beliefs, which they can keep reinforcing to you through their algorithms online. Don't underestimate what these people are doing in all that they're listening to. I know that I take a major risk in some ways speaking out the way I do because um, I've had to contemplate being killed. And, and, and I don't think of myself that important, really. 
but what I could do and what I could bring into being, I am with what time I do have here. Because one of the things that I, I committed to doing, and I would invite anybody, I said some things earlier, but um, I remember, and I'm going to say this for all the, the, the survivors of the people you, you've had on. I was like you, but I also could have become the perpetrator. And it's very scary when you see your life back, looking back and seeing where those rituals were created with you from your mother and not realize you carried them out into the world and did them to women and not meaning to. This is the sad truth is that there's a lot of people out there that don't want to live in hell and they want to be loved so badly and they don't have healthy representation of it at any point in their life. And they're totally devoid of that knowledge. This is not making excuses for people. I believe you have to be responsible for what you've done. I believe that. I believe there's a responsibility there, but it's like, it's like what you have to take a look at for yourself. And once you see it in yourself, then you'll realize you're not any different than anybody else. No one consciously deceives themselves to make bad choices that could lead to disaster. When you don't have healthy boundaries as a child and you don't have safe adults around you, you are making possible pedophilia in a child. Not because that child is attracted to minor persons, not because it wants to be, but because it is the only the only thing it can hold on to is itself. It only knows its own child. That doesn't mean that they won't commit acts of violence because they don't have that recognition. They just know that their body is turned on through lust after a kid. And they're hardwired that way because of the damage that they had as children. This is not a case about pedophiles this is my mother and father i'm talking about and it's also watching my life come apart in steps and i had a woman who loved me unconditionally and showed me how beautiful i am and i cried for it all the time because i there was everything i ever wanted in a person was there in her and i couldn't see it I was blind because I was always fighting my mother. I was always having to protect myself from being hurt and, and, and abused and disappointed from everything that I ever loved that was taken away from me as a child. And I could, and I'm just, I'm here to tell you, I could be resentful and hateful of this world a hundred times over for all the reasons that one could hate the world. And I could hate myself a hundred, and I could have hated all those women and I did not. I wanted to, when I, what I'm saying to you here is, I found myself going to strippers, being with prostitutes at times. When I say prostitutes, I don't mean that. Sex trafficked women, sex workers, And it was because I was alone and I could not connect normally with a healthy person. And I didn't know what was wrong with me because I had a dream to be a husband and a father at 25 and have four children. And, and, um, and, I, and I attracted beautiful women from all over the world in LA, people who were intelligent, smart, but they had their childhood issues too. And, they couldn't, they couldn't rescue me. They couldn't save me. I couldn't save them. And it, and it was, and it's not just about saving somebody. You're, you're the idea of saving someone, first of all, nobody asked to be, but what you're doing is you're basically placing your self-worth and trying to be something to that person. You cannot understand, like most people, 
don't is that those predator parents were on my body as a child. And that's what I had to make sense of out of love after I cried myself to sleep every time with convulsions and near-death experiences, your mother and father doing that to you. And, um, and you can't believe it. And then as an adult, you don't want to become those things. And then you start to see yourself as you get older, become those things, you know, going out on a birthday with a woman who <laughs> was had four or five men that paid her a retainer for, and she was married guy, you know, one, probably a wonderful dude I never met with a child affording $6,000 a month daycare, going out with me on my birthday and getting drunk. And yeah, it, 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 it finally hit me seeing disaster after disaster with no bad intentions, no, nobody's plan A to have not seeing what you're doing to yourself and really it's not about shame and guilt really it takes shame and guilt maybe to wake up but it can't be lived there you can't hold that in you can't it's not about you as i said it's about accountability responsibility but the real accountability and the real responsibility is in seeing the truth about what was going on and you and and you just you know, people say, oh, my God, you can't, I, you're, you know, no, I'm doing this. I am doing this. I, John Paul Rice, am doing this because I believe that it's important to say these things. Men and women have been deceived forever. Beauty, fashion, it's fake. It's bullshit. It's cultured socialized, culturalized norms to create attractiveness in an entire industry that inverts love and makes it about lust. I'm supposed to get, I'm supposed to find you, Emma, attractive because you do your hair this way and you have your lips this way and your eyes this way. And I'll tell you something, I'm not here to pick on you, but I always, I told my friend this, my best friend, Diane, who I love dearly and she loves me. And I said, I always wanted to see all those girls with their makeup off. And the reason why is because I always saw their sweetness more so than I could, just their prettiness. I saw the real them underneath that whole thing. And um, sometimes it was frightening too, because they were hiding things. They were hiding behind that mask and that wasn't their fault. And it wasn't about them hiding behind a mask that was the problem. It was the fact that they had to or felt they needed to in order to feel loved. A lot of stories, strip clubs are some of the saddest places on earth that tell the highest truth. They really do. I know why they exist. I know why girls go there because it's the safest thing for them with security and all of that. They don't have to be out on the street with a unpredictable jackass and customers, you know, who can get out of hand before somebody comes in and has to use their gun or their hands. We just don't, we, we've created this whole thing and we can't, we can't undo it. We can't deconstruct it and we can't destroy it and make it um, new again through destruction. This is the old world. The world of theirs is order and chaos. That's what he told you in that video. They create everything out of chaos. And the only excuse, that's their excuse. But this is the time where humanity has to realize we can't go back to the nostalgia. The nostalgia only represented something of our memories from before. You take the new. You, you take the good that once was, clean it off, and you make it new again. Bring it together. Take all those broken pieces, bring them together. My path to learn, to grow, to try, and I mean, I know we're, we're running a little late here. Um, 
but my path to grow uh, did not take a day and it didn't take three years. It took an entire lifetime of self-reflection and deep introspection and realizing how miraculous life is and how uh, fortunate I am to be not a statistic. To be able to tell you these things so that maybe somebody else becomes inspired to say something about themselves or thinks in a new, this is why you do it. You, 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 you just plant seeds everywhere you can go, not, th not thinking you know how it ends or what's right for everybody. It's just living your authentic self that you have always wanted to be that child that you were born as you have to go back. You, you, you have to use imagination to create new concepts. There's no thought process in that discovery. Coke and Pepsi aren't going to get it done anymore. You've got to think on a level that is different from the world that has been projected onto you. You can come back. They don't want you to remember what worked. That's why they're erasing time and history. You have to condemn it one side starts the magic and then it spreads and then eventually everything else is forgotten and lost and we shut it all off and then we're in a new time and oh wow yeah. but the thing is is that w the world goes on there isn't anything permanent for all the times that i was afraid of dying and being killed or for whatever the reasons were my own paranoia even potential potentials that exist out there for me to be able to 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 be to be able to say, not that I don't care if I die, but that I'm not afraid of living. I'm not afraid to live anymore. And it's going through and and learning all that you've learned, not in knowledge, but what you've lost and what you had replacing your intuition and your divine knowing of things when you were a baby and plugged into that undistorted channel of you're manifesting yourself. You're not just receiving it, you're manifesting it. You're playing a role on the stage of this world in your own time and space. And you have this precious time to do something with it that is very different than anything that's ever been done before. The road and the path that you will choose is the one that is right for you, but let it teach you, let it evolve you, let it comfort you, let it hold you, let it be your guide in bringing back and resurrecting this human experience again. Whatever it is supposed to and meant to be in its final conclusion, it will go back to its source, it'll go back home eventually. And what that home is, is not something to be feared. They, again, they gave you the fear of dying. They want you to be afraid of dying. This, you, you only have one life, that's it. YOLO, man, get it all now, right? You can go through all the programming, it's all there. But, but if you know that you're divine, if you really know you're divine, there isn't an enemy to go out and find anymore because all of them will be, all the enemies you will find and more are right here in the mirror hatred does not have a place in the future if there is to be one and making this a safe world for all children begins when we heal ourselves as adults the child's the child in us and and we'll give that this this i'm saying pedophilia all these things that are emerging onto the scene and becoming more part of our culture if you fight them it'll carry on. If you build a world that is safe for all children in the generation, all of that will extinguish because all of those kids who are in pain that you know are being abused and then abusing their bodies and all of these things, you know, changing their selves and, and all the horror stories that you hear from that, from the people who've actually gone through the surgery and see that it didn't change their situation and, depression and the hell that they have to live not all but many of them do it's not sold to them as what it was what it is you love them love them care for them comfort them let them know they're children of god don't let them be condemned 
for being where they are at and how they feel and how they're being perceived on the stage of the world of men who are unconscious and who seek power, not love. Power is their substitute. They can never, they will never be able to feel what that was in that video about the heart and its elusiveness to them. They too are trying to understand this, but they can't feel the quantum field of the Holy Spirit in the heart. They don't understand how that changes time, but they know that it, if it began to unfold in the divine way that it will, that they could not stop it. They could not stop its movement in this time because we won't let it. We will not be put back to sleep again. We will not not remember who we are. We will be the sovereign, holy being that we are. The meek shall inherit the earth, the ones that know the truth and who withhold the sword, not because of a competition, but because of the defender of all life, which is to give life to defend it. That's Christ's way. That's the shepherd over his sheep, his sheeple, his flock of followers, who he gives his life for and will drop all of everything that he is doing to go find the one who has gone astray yet again and will do it over and over and over again. That's why he's so powerful. Because God's son is the one that loves all his children. The mercy that Christ gave is the mercy he received. The one who said, son of God, have mercy on me. And he heard that man who had no name and who could not, he was retarded, he was blind. And Christ gave him sight again, and gave him the ability to hear again. Blindness, and this is the last thing I'll say, and then you can ask whatever question you want. <laughs> but blindness and our deafness is really simply this, that uh, the blind will see and the deaf will hear when the truth is spoken. And when you look at this world and you say, what's beautiful about it, all life is beautiful. The only divine voice that I ever had, well, there were many, but one of them told me when I was in LA in 2019 and I was walking out of that town and I was having a mystical experience. Um, there was this divine peace that overcame me when I was walking and I was having my, you know, like kind of like fighting through some of my thoughts. And then it just came over me and it said, love everything. And I could feel the meaning of that in that moment of what it meant to let go of all of your thoughts and attachments and emotions and where they were all, you know, happening at that moment and just said, love all of it, see it that way, perception, perceive it to be love and it is, forgive and it will be forgiven. Our perceptions, our imagination, create the consciousness of the perception that we are creating in our space in our mind and it's going out into the field and it's taken it's coming in to others whose lives we touch without saying a word be the model be the thing that is that proves the beliefs false the truth requires no belief if it's lived and you're the model of it and everyone will look to you and come to you and they will be fed and they will be clothed and they will be healed and they will be taken care of. And it's really as simple as that sounds, that is it. And everything that we do from that moment on changes time because we're not looking at prof maximizing our balance sheets and profitability. We're looking at, okay, how can we make money and, and it reinvest intellectual capital in our businesses. We don't have to create chairs. We can create businesses that have the 501c3 forget it go create a business 
that doesn't have government limitations and boundaries that you have to answer to authority with. Create your business around a system that is not about banking transaction through invoice. I have something you need to find a way to de de decentralize, which is to create a blueprint that could be replicated everywhere. You take your business, you take all the good, you make it new again, you repurpose it and reorganize it, and then you give it to other people and they will start nourishing themselves. They will feed themselves. They will learn how to fish and nourish themselves. Anyway, that's all I want to say. It's a long ass answer. I don't even remember what the question was, but there you go. <laughs> Gosh, I just... I just want to say from the bottom of my heart that I know I haven't known you for that long in comparison to how long we've been on this planet, but in this short time that I have known you, I am just so in awe of the way that you honor what you've gone through in such a way that has brought you full circle to be who you are today. It's like you said, you could have taken a whole different route, you know, and I think people listening to you, myself included, value what you say so much because of your experiences growing up that led you to this amazing journey that you've been on the last few years of really coming to terms with that and that that deep understanding that most people aren't willing to dive into you know it's a lot easier to live every day being angry and hateful and it feels rightfully something that we should do you know it feels like the right thing to do to live that way because of the things that were done and to feel like there's no justice and to feel that it wasn't fair, you know? And it's such a, an amazing example that you set to show what can happen when you look at things through a different lens. And again, it's it's not that you're accepting what, what happened. It's not that you look at things that are happening in the world and say, I'm okay with that. But your mind's always looking at a solution for it instead of being you know, for better lack of, of words, part of the problem, you know, and I think that there's a real differentiating factor with that, but I just want to honor you because it's, I've learned so much just listening to you and seeing this journey inspires me. I know if people, the more people that watch you, that means that more teenagers and young kids will eventually stumble on your videos and say, gosh, I could do that too. You know, I don't have to be a victim of my life either. This side's playing the the white side of the chessboard. This this side's playing the black the black side. I don't have to play, you know. And th those are really empowering lessons for people who are really stuck in this mold that we're taught from, yeah. from childhood. You know, even from continuing to be a victim with all the different things that are thrown at us, it's very easy to fall into that, you know. And I just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing because it's so important. And I I know I said it in the intro, but I truly feel like you have one of the most important voices of this generation. And it gives me such hope that you've chosen to use your voice to help impact the future generations. Emma, thank you. Um, be the most authentic person you can be, be humble in the sense of not thinking of yourself humble, like humility level humble. Um, I have learned that if you find one person in your life that you can open up and hand the keys to all your secrets, and that may come from somebody who is traumatized by those keys and those secrets. But if you love each other, you'll stay there to work it out and, and fight another day, not to fight each other, but to love each other that much more. It, 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 it takes... It and, and I'm just saying, I'm. my experience with Diane is living proof that if I had told you all that I had put her through in just the last year, you'd be like, wow, screw that guy, right? She had to take it to a higher place, not with blind faith, but to see my intentions and that I really didn't mean. It's hard when you're triggered by a person who's triggered with their own unconscious stuff to, to then say, I know his intention is not to harm me, but it's causing me pain right now. And he's in pain right now. And then she was going, how do I get him out of pain? This was an amazing, like, I found love in a time of chaos, right? It's like a novel. 
um, it came in all the forms that I didn't expect it to. And what, what told me that it was um, real was the fact that it was everything that I wanted and I was terrified of it. I was absolutely terrified of the real thing um, because it called me, it made me question everything. And I made her question everything too. And we had to reevaluate our trauma and see where mine began and ended and where hers began and ended. And we actually found out that we're almost identical. Both of us had totally different expressions, but the same, the, the pain, trauma is trauma is trauma, pain is pain is pain. We see it as separate. It's, it's the same, it's the same void that is loneliness and fear, but a loneliness of like abandonment. And in our moment of need, it's what creates narcissists when you abandon them in their moment of need 99 out of 100 times. You're going to create a narcissist. I mean, you're on your way. There's other things that have to happen, of course, but I'm just saying one of those things is abandonment. And separation, anxiety, um, What I'm saying is that you, if you're going to plug into somebody that is the best person for you, it's like the person who wants the best you to be here. And to be quite true and, and truthful, if you'd watched me over the last couple of years, I was still fighting a lot of myself inside. Um, and I did not want to feel the feelings of the, that abandonment again, and did everything to protect myself and make my identity I had to see the truth about myself in order to heal. And I needed someone there to be the mirror with compassion to hold, to reflect back to me what I was while I fought her and felt I was under attack and that I was being argumented, you know, like arguing. And I'm, I'm just saying, this is what happened. I, if I told this story, it, like, it doesn't make sense on paper. You're like, you can't sell this experience to anybody. Like, hey, you know, <laughs> okay, you're going to go through an absolute living hell next year. <laughs> and you're going to lose your mind a couple of times. You're going to go back and relive your near-death experiences at a physical level and a mental, emotional level. But you're going to come out okay. And you're going to be loved in the end of all of this. And most things that you would go through would drive you extremely insane. How about it? You want to do it? Want to do it? Come, in. Come on. Hey, John Paul Rice, you get to do it with. Great. <laughs> only one person that could do that with me. And it was, she was the only one. No, I, I mean that because I realized that I had been searching for my mom. Um, I'd been finding my mom and replaying that game with every woman that I had ever met. And I didn't even realize it. And I would, I didn't know my power. I was, I was, I was calling for help. And I wanted somebody so badly to love me that anybody who gave me attention. It was the same thing as a child. But I finally found help. And not that, because I want to make it clear to people that may have I don't know. I mean, I talked to a lot of people over the last couple of years and I never wanted anybody to feel bad because I know there were some women in there that like really wanted to care for me, but couldn't. 
And then there were some crazy ones too that I later found out were stalkers, but you know. Oh no. <laughs> everybody has to learn in this day and age on social media. It's like, oh yeah, they see you this way, but they, <laughs> they don't know who you are and you don't know who they are. And they're just like, yes, I had people. Yeah, I, I, I had to learn. I was very ignorant, but that's not really the point of this. That's just something to laugh at a little bit. But I didn't realize the power of divine feminine and masculine energy. And when you harmonize that, you can, it's very dangerous what you can do with, with the, the real underlying magic that all human beings have that we, uh, it's right in front of you, but you just, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you can, you can literally like seduce somebody with words. You can, you know, it, it, because you can unlock all the psychological keys in that person and, and, and manipulate them. And that's just, that is not, <laughs> that's why I tell people is like, don't go playing with fire, <laughs> please. Don't go playing with spirituality. Don't go playing with psychedelics. Don't, don't be, don't be thinking, you know, anything and using that to cause somebody to see you a certain way that you want to be seen that's where you get in trouble because if you can't be your authentic self then you your magic is a distortion of authenticity it's a it's an imitation of it so if you want real magic you want to change world you want to be the speaker you want to you want to you want to change minds hearts and minds through your voice you have to get this this temple in here cleaned out so that the the words and the and the vo and your intentions, like what you think you're doing, is actually what you are you are doing. You can't control what other people are doing, but you're you're not putting yourself in situations where you know that rescuer is going to come out, but it's going to be at the worst time possible because you think, well, I've figured it out. I could throw me that loop one more time. I, I can I can I can handle it. I can handle it. Not, no, you can't. You only can until you see. The more awareness that you have, this last thing, I'm going to shut up because we got to go. But the, the last thing is, is that the more awareness you place on yourself and you watch yourself, not what you think you are, not what you think about the world. That's only one part of it. And that's limiting. It's limiting. Your infinite consciousness, you are an emanation. You come from God. You come from that same divine spark. New Age teaches you that there are outside threats to this world. They, us, anything that is us or they, them and us, just run the hell away from it. Please, I don't give a crap if it is dressed as nice as anything and has all the, you know, it's like this one isn't the multi-level marketing cult. This is the different one. Yes, I know it's called, they, they, they figured out a new way to say it. And you don't see it as the cheapo, you know, scammy version. You see it as the, hey, everybody come along. Let me just tell you something. You give this away free. You don't charge for it. You don't hold secrets. You don't do workshops and retreats and have your own little, you know, following. I'm not saying these things are bad, okay? Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people I'm talking about right now that are in this. And some of them have relationships with me. Okay, so I'm not coming down on anybody for wanting an escape and getting a fix and all that, but on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, in heaven, there is not a side that one has to take against the angels, okay? When we realize that we're all sons and daughters of a living creator, that means our enemy is too. Our perceived enemy is a son and daughter of the living creator. It doesn't know that it is because its experience does not feel the way you feel. To give them the experience that would change their mind, you have to be the experience that changes their mind, not the command. Not the, well, my side over here, you, you, endless crap of that, you know, it's like, we're going to keep playing Red Rover, Red Rover, Charlie <laughs> Red Rover, and we're going to keep going. <laughs> we're going to keep going, right? But, but this is what I'm saying. These are cycles and loops. And um, the end, the, 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 I guess to end this, which I've done now, I've done the Lord of the Rings 
um, five endings, right? <laughs> to bring it home, Emma, what I'm really saying is, all right, I'm going to stop talking and just laugh it off with you here. I could talk to you all day. I would love to have you on again. I'm sure people listening would love to too. I feel like I could go on talking to you for another three hours, but yeah. since it is getting late, where can people connect with you online and right. where are you at? Yeah. So if you want to see any of our movies, there's two places to go. No restrictions, ent.com. You'll see game day up there. You'll see child's voice up there. You'll see memories of a lost love. Um, one hour fantasy girl. If you go on Tubi and you look up at Tubi, T U B I.com and you search Edgar Michael Bravo, you'll find some of our movies up there as well that you can watch for free with ads, uh, either through the Tubi app or on the website or the smart app. Um, Tubi's got excellent movies up there, some of your best ones for free. You can connect with me at no restrictions on Instagram. I'm sometimes on Twitter, sometimes on Gab, mostly on Instagram these days. And I really don't, uh, I'm on Facebook, but I don't post that much anymore. So, and of course you can email us through the website if you want. Well, I'll have all that link below. And what I'll do too, if there's any other videos, um, I know John Rapport was one. If there's yeah. anything else you want me to put in the show notes, I always love to make that really detailed so people can go connect with you and then research the, the tools that, that people give them on here. So I'll have all of that link below. John, you are just such a bright light in this world and you're one of the few people in my life and that I see that no matter what's going on in the world, I'm always so energized by being around you. You're somebody that's always giving so much energy to the world and to other people and in such a good way, you know, and I, I know that that's rubbing off on people slowly, but surely, and that you're going to have such a great impact on people. And I'm so excited to see all the other things that you're going to be doing. But in the meantime, you guys, please go connect with John. He's just amazing. Go encourage him on his social media. Please go support his art. I always say the best gift that you can give any guest on this show is to go directly to the sources that they recommend that you connect with them and to do it, to, whether it's donating, watching a film, listening to a song, reading a book, whatever it is, go to them. You know, we're so conditioned to go to all of these government organizations, including 501c3s, and we need to get back to saying, how can I help you? I care about you. How can I help you without the interference of going through a third party or a fourth party to do so. So please go connect with John, you guys. And thank you everyone for all of your support. I couldn't do it without you. I'm so grateful for everybody that listens every week and that cares. And I am just so honored that any of you care to tune in and listen and, and connect with us. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening. God bless you all. And we will see you next week.